wrong side. No. Where is his yours listed? Don't talk during the intro, please. And other than that. <laughs> we're, we're ready to go. Top left is Danny. Her husband in the top right is Earl. Bottom left is Emma. And on the bottom right is her father, Mike. I'm, I'm Emma's father? So you're my father. I'm your father? I think I'm the youngest one on this how, show, so that's going to be an interesting so little time travel event there. Lori, Lori is going to be upset with you, Sal. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's start the show. Let's start the show. In five, four, three... You're listening to The Converted Podcast, the podcast about the guild Convert to Raid on Airy Peak U.S. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 143 of The Converted Podcast, the World of Warcraft podcast all about the Convert to Raid guild on Airy Peak U.S. Today is February 11th, 2019. It's just about 6.30 p.m. Airy Peak local time. Thank you all very much for joining us. Sal, what's up? In this episode, we have the very best chat room ever, your guild memories. Uh, Ashen may be true arts with the guild haps and your guildy and mine. Jay Falcon updates us on the second three bosses of Dazara lore. That's right, everybody. I am Bartholomew the Paladin, and as Sal said, with us tonight is CTR guildy Jay Falcon. How you doing, man? Hey, Barf. Sorry, didn't mean to jump on that line. Uh, nice to see you. <laughs> if we gave you a copy of the show notes, I'd be upset with you, but since you're winging it, Everything's going to be just fine. Unfortunately, T wasn't able to be here, at least for the beginning part of the episode. But, I mean, if she jumps in partway through the call, I'd, more than the better for us. Uh, Sal, what have you been up to this week? Well, gosh, I don't even know what to do without uh, without Arts, dude. Like, she has been, I mean, she... She she keeps the show rolling these days. She's the one that like that, that like that like hears like you know big pauses and like jumps in or she sees like a she's really good at seeing like like, like a technical difficulty like if if someone like freezes or something she just keeps talking. Whereas me, I'm like playing on my phone or something, or you know not sober. But today I had to, you know, I I heard that Turarts was going to be under a snowbank wherever she is. And I'm like, huh, I better not drink tonight. Uh, Cause we do do the show in the, in the evenings. Um, uh, so uh, y y did you know that l last week? I don't know if you remember last week. I said, I Yo, was smashed we last guests. week. I don't remember anything. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about how, what you did and did not do <laughs> to the recording later on. But uh, so I uh, asked for a guest and uh we're booked for months now man months that's i mean like i'm like yeah i mean we can get you in in may i suppose type type thing like legit i'm i i i'm booking people in april Holy yeah smokes so yeah so okay when i tweet it from what the, about march uh oh we're skipping march <laughs> no we've got people in march we've got people in march We've got we got two shows in February, two shows in March. I've got one show in April booked, and yeah, and I've got two more people um, I'm talking to. We just got an email, so, so like, whoo! Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I I like tweeted from a wrong account, and then I made a joke about tweeting from the wrong account, and then suddenly there's this deluge of interest. <laughs> as soon as I you know put something self-deprecating on Twitter. Everyone wants to come talk to me. That's crazy. I, I don't know what to say, but it was effective. Uh, so, <laughs> how are you doing, Barf? 
I'm doing great, man. Uh, I was a little nervous that we were going to come into this show and I wasn't going to know nothing about none of the bosses because, I mean, you know, we brought on Jay Falcon to talk about the bosses and I, I don't want to be a total stooge. Like, I want to know something about these guys. But, like, I can't right. be bothered to do research on bosses that I'm not actively fighting. And um, chickens... You're literally after all three of those bosses you've seen now. Uh, the first three we've all, we've seen all three of them, and the second three right. we killed opulence this week, and we killed uh, council of four hammers or whatever they call themselves. That's this sure the other one, and I, I now I feel like I know something about trolls and gold and crowns, uh, so that's really good. The other did thing, you get a crown? I did not. Habant got a crown, and he's he did the worst thing imaginable, which is put it on and then complained about it. Um, uh. but I'm happy to see it. Uh, the other thing I did, and Navox, open your ears, buddy. I'm here to talk about you, baby. I oh, and Frasley, Frasley too. I uh, I decided I I didn't know what to do with my warrior that I leveled, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to um, person versus person the game up a little bit, the player versus player, and I ran some battlegrounds today, just some randos, and nice. I first of all. Number one, got my butt whooped, but not because I was doing it wrong. Not because I was doing it wrong. I was targeting the healers. I would get to low health, and I would use my many leaps to get away, and then I'd sit down and eat because our healers aren't focused on me. I'm <laughs> low-level fury DPS. I can't hit nothing for nothing. Um, hanging out near the flags, doing what I'm supposed to do, you know, right? In fact, it, for the video audience, the background that you're seeing around this I shot this uh, photo today, and we lost that fight. So good for me, doing my best. But, uh, man, I'm telling you, Fury Warrior in Battlegrounds feels pretty nice. I got a lot of charges. I got a lot of leaps. I'm just everywhere at once. I can punch a thing with a with a big, big shiny weapon. It's a fun class, you man. It's a fun class. Navox in chat, uh, he refuses to play anything except Fury. It's a, it's a good spec. Yeah, he, he, like, doesn't acknowledge the other specs at all. And the other specs are fine, too, as far as I'm aware. But, I mean, it's, like, just, I, I would I would rather attack with two big things than with one big thing. It just, mathematically, it makes more sense that way. <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. I remember back in the day when Navix played, uh, played some protection specs, too. He tried to play Prot, but that wasn't actually a thing that was ever going to work. He's in here claiming that he plays all three specs, but I think I think Sal's got his number. I think he's a two-sword man. I listen to man. his podcast, and he and Berserker always say that a Fury is the only correct uh, spec. It's, they don't call the, the show Unshackled Arms. <laughs> that would be silly. <laughs> It's all about the tanking. <laughs> you know what? I want to hear a little bit more about tanking. Continuing in our Convert to Raid guild series on the Zara lore, the raid instance in Battle for Azeroth, tier, I don't know, what are we on, 87? I, don't, I can't remember. At Today least. we're going to talk about bosses 4, 5, and 6 of the new raid, the Battle for Razzle Dazzle. Here to give us all the details is Jay Falcon. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Hey, uh, very happy to be here. Nice to see you all. Uh, hello, chat. I am Jay Falcon. Please just call me Jay. Everybody else does. Okay, Jay. Uh, before we really dig into the raid stuff, the real meat of the conversation, um, why don't you go ahead and tell your guildies a little bit more about yourself for those of you, for those of them who haven't met you yet. Uh, absolutely. So I am the stealth raid leader of Standard Dragon Protocol, one of the heroic raid teams. I, I say stealth because I am hardly ever around these days other than the times that my raid team is raiding. But we are, uh, I, I'm, I'm fairly old school. We've been around for a long time on uh, Airy Peak. We started off uh, back in vanilla. The raid team uh, originally formed... Um, back with uh, Syndragosa, which is where we got our, our name. I was explaining how to do the Syndragosa fight over and over again, got sick and tired of telling people how to uh, stand around a dragon, and I said Standard Dragon Protocol, and somebody said, hey, that'd be a great raid team name. So here it is. <laughs> and we've been uh, Standard Dragon Protocol ever since. Um, 
we don't recruit a lot. We've got a, a great team of, you know, 15 to 18 people that we, uh, we have that are really, really super stable. And uh, every, every raid tier, we come in, we do our thing, and uh, we clear heroic uh, stem to stern ahead of the curve and uh, then take a, uh, a little break and, uh, you know, occasionally run a few guildies through here or there when we, uh, when we have the time. But it's a it's a lot of fun, and uh, all dinosaurs are also dragons. So yeah, there's plenty of dragons. Oh, then the Zara lore is perfect for you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now I'm I'm given to understand because I haven't been a host on this show for the entire tenure of the show, uh, so I'm, I'm given to understand that you've been here before. Yeah, what? How long ago was that? Uh, I have been on one time before. And I have no idea how long it's been. At, at several years, at least. It was. It's been we'll a few it in the years. First yeah. Half. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's kind of funny, Sal, that you mentioned the uh, the Twitter uh, the Twitter blast that you sent out to try to get some folks. I think mm -hmm. that was the first time I've had a chance to look at Twitter uh, in probably three months. And I saw your request, <laughs> and I said, "Hey, Sal, I know these bosses. I haven't been on in a while. I, I'd be happy to happy to come help." <laughs> That's funny. Wow. That's, uh, I I'm really happy. I'm really happy you saw that. <laughs> so my, my, my real, my real life career, uh, takes a lot of my time right now. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's, I'm a little bit, a little bit stealth in game and a little bit stealth, uh, in the community, but yeah, no, I'm ha super happy to be here and have been here for a really, really long time. Um, told a story that made Sal cry the last time I was on. And, and so we'll, we'll try not to repeat that. We're going to try to keep the happy vibes going. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tell me about it. Share with us. Um, it, it was a, a story of how I met my, uh, my lovely wife. Uh, my, my wife, Lorien is, uh, is, is also in the guild. And, uh, we met actually playing world of Warcraft. And now this was a long time ago in a, in a Azeroth that you won't even recognize anymore. But back in the day, there was a little tiny island off the, uh, off the coast of Stranglethorn Vale. And I was, I was leveling my very first tune, which is Jay Falcon. I got in way over my head because in those days you could actually out level the quest content. So I was doing orange, orange and red level quests on my paladin. And uh, I, got mobbed by a whole bunch of water elementals on a little tiny island off the coast of uh, uh, off the coast of Stranglethorn Vale. And uh, my wife, uh, who was playing a priest, came up over top of the hill, healed me, destroyed all the water elementals, and left me just standing there <laughs> as, as a priest. And uh, we started talking, became friends, uh, started, uh, you know, did the whole, let's get on voice chat in a dungeon the first time. Is she a guy kind of thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, and turned out she was incredibly sweet and I gave her a blue dagger that dropped at the time. And she thought that I was generous because back then those were a thing. And, uh, yeah, the, the rest is sort of, sort of history and, uh, and, We've been together ever since. So it's we got married uh, ten years ago now. <laughs> Congratulations, man! That's incredible. Good for you guys. Yeah. So, you know, raid with your girlfriends, guys. It's worth it. Oh, I do. It's great. <laughs> that, oh, that, okay, that, that, that's just it, though. He 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 hadn't met her at all. He was there. Yeah getting pwned about to die and this priest comes over the hill and saves him like like in a blaze of holy holy glory um winchester in chat says winchester in chat's laughing and he says that uh he had her fooled i'm curious to know is he talking about gifting somebody a blue dagger out of generosity when paladins can't equip daggers how generous how generous was it really <laughs> Well, she didn't have to actually know that at the time. It was fine. It was a it was a world it was a world B O P or sorry B O E. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's so, very different. And so, especially back, then, back in the day, that was that, that was probably worth like forty gold. Yeah. Oh, and, you, you could retire on that back in the day. Yeah, uh, forty gold exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is it is an Azeroth that none of us would recognize today, but <laughs> still, still 
it, it's a it's a great story. We've we've been together ever since. We we raid together. Um, she's one of our primary healers on the on the team and has been just a a tremendous supporter uh, of mine and this this crazy hobby that we enjoy uh, together. See, no tears, Sal. I told you I could do it without making you cry. Well, I knew the, I knew the story this time. Yeah. I knew the story this time, so I was just trying to, like, treat Barf to a good story. Oh, it's, that's one of my favorites. I'll listen to everybody tell yeah. that one. It, it's, it's a pretty good story. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, yeah, I, we did the whole dating thing, and, and now I, I live down here in Atlanta, moved out of, out of where I was, and, and uh, yeah, we just have a great a great uh, great thing and it's awesome so then what brought you to ctr and did you guys come here together we did so um i'm i mentioned that we had the raid team since back in in wrath and we were originally on the lothar server and we were having trouble recruiting uh, sort of in that sort of down period the contraction period of warcraft we were having trouble we were always a small team and we were looking for some place that we would be able to uh, maintain our how we do things, that some guild wasn't going to absorb us and tell us how to raid or, or how to be us. But we wanted to continue to do the 10-man type raiding that, that we had been doing for a long time. And I randomly found the, 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 the guys on the show uh, convert to raid. Mm -hmm. started listening to the show started hearing about that sort of thing and said well that's kind of neat and ended up getting blizzcon tickets that very same year went out and ran into a whole bunch of people went to the very first convert to raid party in yeah. that in that in that room with a really low ceiling where my uh, head kind of brushed the ceiling and was incredibly it was hot so hot <laughs> and and coltrane was in that robe and he and was wearing was a robe. the hottest one ever wait stop <laughs> I've seen Coltrane at the Convert to Raid parties. He was berobed at the first one. He was, oh, he a was big, berobed. thick robe. I big, thick, missed heavy red robe yeah. out. Oh my god, I missed out so hard. I promise he will never do something like that again. Well, I mean, <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine. He he looked miserable with that spot. I mean, he was he was so nice though, and uh, you know, got to meet. Uh, got to meet Pat, talk to Pat a little bit, and and talk to just a lot of the guild members. And and there wasn't a ton of people at that first one, but got to see kind of what the guild was about. And uh, then talk to the the ten people. We merged over uh, as a team. All came over, and Convert to Raid has been one of the best decisions as a team leader that I have ever made to bring us over into the into the guild. It's a tremendously supportive guild. It's great for Ray leaders. Recruitment is always great. Tour Arts does a fantastic job. Uh, Echelon does a fantastic job helping out. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a great place to be. So I would highly recommend any a lot of people, and I'm not just pitching this. This is what I really believe. Any, uh, <laughs> any, any, uh, anybody who, who's looking for that place to be, uh, you can find, find a place to raid over here. It's, it's, it's a great place to be. So that's how we got here. I, 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 Barf, I told you he was lovely. I believed you. You don't have to like try to convince me of it. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's. We're gonna get down to it. So we've we've done this whole series. We've been talking about Dazara lore. First, we did a raid overview. Last week, Euro explained to us the first three bosses, and that he didn't. That was great that was way better than i expected that to have gone <laughs> so, um now i'm just making fun of someone on my raid team that's all uh he he was great and, and totally broke it down for us um now my opinion is that the middle part of this raid is actually where the, like the meat and potatoes are you know because this is where um we find out, I mean, this is, this is the reason the Alliance is going there, right? Uh, th that's why we're going there in the first place. Now, Jay Falcon, Jay, we'd very much like you to break down the, uh, the well, the bosses four, five, and six, okay? Because there's nine. We're doing it yeah. in LFR hunks, right? 
Absolutely. Um, that's what we're doing. We're doing LFR hunks here. So please, uh, let's start with a, a, a boss number four. So opulence. Um, mm -hmm. And and Sal told me to keep the raid tech. Uh, I'm a raid leader, so I I teach raid tech to my people. But she told me to keep that part down a little bit for you guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try Sal. If I start going over, give me that that look, and I'll. I'll move on. Oh, we'll just mute <laughs> but, you. <laughs> oh, that'll work too. <laughs> um, but opulence is the is is boss number four. Um, it's it's the first boss sort of inside once you've broken into the the first city. Uh, the first three bosses, you know, lead you up into how do how do you break into the city? And we have have seen opulence before. Opulence was the the boss when we were watching um, in the cutscenes uh, back with the the War Master or uh, Matthias Shaw and uh, Flynn Fairwind try to break in and and steal the Abyssal Scepter, which the Abyssal Scepter is is really super important for the, sort of the the overall raid overview the the deception that's happening on the other side of the city, which I, I imagine you guys have probably already talked about. That was how we created the so, fog, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's how we we basically faked out the Horde army and pulled them out of the city so that we could actually get in here. Um, and and opulence is a it's it's kind of a super interesting boss. He he's basically a guardian of all of the Zandalari treasure, and he is the treasure itself. So the treasure rises up to defend itself. Um, the uh, the the original king of the Zandalari and I I can't pronounce his uh, it's uh, Drazar I think is how you pronounce it King I, Drazar I think that's why the kingdom is called Dazar Alor because his name is yeah. Dazar right Yeah absolutely and so he's actually um, he's actually one of the uh, dungeons that you actually fight as well King's Rest mm -hmm. so he's the last boss of that dungeon so you can fight him as an undead but he he enchanted all of this gold. Uh, to defend itself and to defend uh, the the treasury that you are breaking breaking into, and so the treasury is an interesting way through. It's it's a two phase fight, right? And so you split your raid group in half, and you have to have sort of two evenly balanced teams, right? So you want to send a couple of healers one way, a couple of healers the other way, and just just make your teams even, at least on normal and heroic. And I, I won't go into any of the mythic stuff because I'm not a mythic raider, um, but just split your team evenly, go down, and the, the critical key is just to keep killing the adds at the same rate. So you really want to have balanced DPS as you go through both sides, dodge all of the sort of mechanics, and then pick up the right gems, right? Gems are going to be the, the critical thing at the end of this, this run of these two things that allow you to get the right thing. Uh, if you're melee... You know, pick up the, the the topaz that lets you hit hit the cleave. If you're a fast, uh, uh, you know, the fast um, uh, fast DPS, pick up the things that are going to let you hit hit things really quickly and stack debuffs really quickly. It's it's really it's really just about picking up the right gems. Then you combine together, the raid comes back together, and you finally get to fight Opulence himself. Um, the toughest part about Opulence is when the ads he spawns ads out. And so you have to use a lot of AOE stuns and things of that nature to keep the ads centered, kill the ads as quickly as possible. So really, really great. Um, really, really great fight. A lot of fun. Some technical challenges in keeping the, 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 the boss's health exactly at the same time. And then my biggest advice for, the, for, the, for this boss actually comes after the boss is over. Don't forget to loot the treasure. Because when you kill Opulence, he explodes. He explodes and there's treasure into like laying around. Of gold. Yeah, absolutely. Go loot that stuff. There's actually really valuable, like a lot of money can come out of those things. And you have a very limited window. So if you run immediately up the hill to get to the next boss, you're you're going to lose out on on some really choice coin. <laughs> uh, so it's it's basically coin. You, you're getting a, a, a when you do that, you get a bunch of grays, but but they'll yeah. be like worth a hundred gold or something like that. So Barf, if you're going, what are you talking about? I went ran around and just clicked on all those things before anyone else could get to them. I'm picturing a treasure goblin and all the little yes. piles yeah. of things. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. 
That's uh-huh. exactly right. It, it just sort of explodes all over the room. You won't have time to pick them all up, but go quickly and, and start picking them up. And it. they they are they are shared between raid team members. So your your raid isn't stealing from each other. You guys can oh, all just go grab them. I totally and... thought I was. No, you're, no, you're fine. <laughs> That's less fun. It, it may be. <laughs> so so opulence is it's it's a great boss. Um, probably some of the, the, the better lines come from Gallywix on the Horde side. We, we don't get to see those, but, you know, goblins and their treasure. So he, yeah. uh, <laughs> if you go watch some of the Horde, the Horde clips, he, he gets kind of angry at, at people for attacking Opulence and, and bringing him down. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you hear at least some of that on the Alliance side, because I mean, that's the, the, obviously if we're a CTR raid team we play alliance side mm-hmm. and I mean when you pull yeah. him he goes what are you doing don't attack it it's beautiful like he's he he gets all upset that's, about that's it that's the that line side. I was referring to that may that may be maybe I've heard on it our side I don't remember okay I've heard that's it. entirely possible yeah well, so he gets he gets kind of upset at us for uh for taking down his uh what I I can only imagine is a pinnacle of of creation for for a goblin <laughs> it's so beautiful it's made of gold why didn't I think of this <laughs> uh, opulence is a pretty like uh, good looking boss i really I, I do like it sal um, thinks everybody's good looking man <laughs> well so how important are those gems they're on normal if you, if you're not really pushing like if you've got enough dps they're, they're mm-hmm. not super important right right um, they get much more important as you go up in difficulties. If you're doing heroic, they're they're going to be much more important. Um, the health of the, the the main piece that the gems are going to really help you with is killing all of the little small ads that come out. Uh. And that that ad kill phase is going to get really super hard because on normal you can you can have enough stuns in your raid team. You know if you've got you know a, a demon hunter or, or a few other things, you can keep them locked right in the center of of under under opulence and just sort of AOE and the AOE them down for the most part. If if you don't, you're really gonna have to have a lot of sort of that AOE cleave and the the gems give you a lot of that ability. Um also the tanks have a, a particular diamond uh that gives them a a hardness uh, it's a basically a shield effect that they have and that dictates the tank swap uh mechanic uh in the fight. Oh I didn't realize so, that um, yeah, so when your sh- when your diamond shield breaks, you want the other tank to taunt, and then that tank ta- tanks for a while until his, his shield breaks, and your your shield comes back. It's a uh, it's they're not super important to get a hundred percent right on normal and heroic. Obviously, mythic teams will 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 pick people individually. The other the other thing that is is kind of critical is that opulence does a sort of an AOE damage effect and if one of your healers has picked up the right gem and has put a hot on every member of your team that damage is significantly reduced um if you don't do that it becomes really problematic or yeah, can become problematic it's i think it's shadow damage and if you pick up that gem and heal somebody for that 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 target has a shadow resistance of like 90% or 95% something Dude. bonkers like that for like a minute. So yeah. your job on that healer is obviously to play a healer the way you normally would, but to make sure that you've healed everybody in the last 30 seconds or so. So if you've got overlap or however long you need to wait for it. Um, I'm usually not assigned to that one, but that's fine. Yeah, that's, we've got that's... druids. They hit everybody. It's whatever. It's fine. Yeah, that's that's the amethyst uh, gem that that does that. It, mm-hmm. it applies the the effect called shadow touched, and it you really only want one or two healers to have this. The rest of the healers are probably going to take the sapphire to to you know increase their healing. But the we we do the same thing, Barf. We we give it to our our druid um, because our druid basically is just dropping hots on everybody, and it's it's a great way to do it. But I will say, uh, holy pr- here's a here's a neat little trick. Uh, holy priests can do their uh, their AOE, Halo. and that does a little bit of healing, and it does a little bit of uh, damage. And if the raid group is all stacked up, that heal Dude. will hit everybody and apply the buff. So holy priests get a little love, and I learned that from my my wife Florian, who who actually plays the holy priest. So 
<laughs> I bet it also works for any kind of ground effects. The druid mushroom, the uh, shaman healing rain, like that all applies healing. So I imagine it doesn't I, have to be direct, I, does it? I I think it, it does have to be a direct hit, I believe. Oh, oh wow. Well, what does no, druid do that's a direct hit? Well, just just applying hots as as they oh, go hots, around. Oh, hots, of course. So the the yeah. initial application of the hot. Well, bar but... for shaman have hots. I mean, we've got riptide, but it's not something I can hit every target with. You better be hitting me on it next week every time. And that's all I'm I saying. I can't because you're on the other side. I can tell. This is one of my favorite I mean, things about this fight, all right? So we've talked a bunch about the actual gold monster who we fight in the middle, but my favorite part of the fight is actually phase one, where we split off into our little, you know, secret, you know, super units, and we're going to fight the thing. That mm, part, yeah. I don't know, there's something about it that feels so great to me. First of all, it reminds me a lot of Thorim from Ulduar, where, you know, part of the raid team is here, part of the raid team is over there, and we have to meet in the middle kind of deal. I really yeah. like that that aspect of it, but I also really like the feeling of like this is my team and their team is over there doing their thing, and I gotta not die or get hurt or whatever because then I'll let down my side and my side will look bad. And then you get to the end of it, and he's like, "Yeah, right side didn't lose any people, and left side lost one person. That makes right side the best side, or you know, whatever little tiny minor things." The I, that's how I picture it. That's my role play when I'm in Chicken's Raid. I don't know if the rest <laughs> of the, I don't know if the rest of the team feels that way, but I get like I'm like, "Yeah, our team kicked butt." This time we got in here. We crunched it. I so get do you feel good it. or bad if you're leading and your boss's health is below the other team? Oh, well, I do, mean, you do know. You, do you feel that? I, I'm a healer, so whatever the damage guys are doing is fine. Oh, okay. It's just as long as they know <laughs> when to dial it back and how far to dial it back and what poisons I mean, or whatever nonsense they're into. Yeah, see, as, as the raid leader, that's always my role of, of like, uh, uh, slow down by 4%, guys. Come on. <laughs> No, I just got to know when to. It's a mess. I just got to know when to stand behind the thing so I don't get lit on fire. And after that, it's just it's it's a it's a cakewalk. Yeah, you know that's that's the other um, the other thing is if if you're having trouble with that first phase, think about where you're putting your mobile healers. You want to send your mobile healers to the right and your less mobile healers to the left. The less mobile healers um, deal a little better with the fire side. There's less sort of movement that is required all of the time in that sort of phase it's not a hard fast rule but just something to think about i get spirit Dude, walker's man. grace on every other fire spin and it is so useful wait a minute resto shaman still gets spirit walker's grace yeah how else am i going to run and heal they took that away from me on elemental write a letter that anymore switch to enhancement like a real um, shaman you don't start with me but I'll tell you what, uh, it, it, it kind of feels like a, like a, like a melee side and a, and a range side, right? And they switched me over and suddenly I was dying. I was like, what is going on? I don't understand. They, then they switched me back and I said, oh, this is re remarkably easier <laughs> over Which here. Which side was easier for you, Sal? The one that you send the people that, who are not but as mobile. The fire side, yeah. The yeah. left side, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other one, I, it's like I could either DPS or get out of poop. You know, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do both. Well, I, I, we don't divide it up by, by melee versus. I, I we would shade higher melee towards the right side, yeah. but we, we try to send some of our more, more, more like you know your affliction warlocks and things like that that are mobile range dps to that side mm -hmm. still so we try to keep it relatively balanced because we're also trying to not just balance the 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 ease but we're also trying to balance our dps output a little bit yes and so keeping somewhat balanced teams if if you just load up all of your all of your melee on a side that really benefits them <laughs> they, they have this tendency to kind of get crazy and and just start pummeling the thing and and never stop <laughs> well as as long as you know the the range is on the side that benefits them too oh i don't know um <laughs> i've killed it once I, <laughs> that's so... all right well you know each period each each team is going to do something a little bit different it's it's a, it's an interesting boss and it's a challenge mm -hmm. for raid leaders because you really have to balance the the skills of your team and your people with with sort of the fight and so that's that's sort of an interesting challenge of how well do you know your people 
right. and, and where can you put them? And so it's, it's an interesting raid leader challenge from that perspective. Is all of the oh. loot from that boss funny? And the reason I <laughs> ask that is because I got, I got shoes this week that make me run faster if I've looted gold in the last six seconds. I, that's a great question. I know most of the the loot is named after, you know, after treasure or gold stealing like things, but I did not actually know that. So yeah, the equip effect kind of is like thirty percent movement speed when you loot gold for six seconds or some bogus nonsense like that. So, you slap so them on and go do quests. Yes. In, yeah, completely useless in raid, but awesome everywhere else. Yeah. I totally want that. <laughs> yeah, get it. Well, and, and speaking of loot, I guess the other thing that we should probably mention is this is where the jeweled crowns come from. <gasps> oh. Yeah, our, our, Maybe. Our, our tank who would rather be <laughs> DPS got one this week. <laughs> it looks good on him. So it, it's kind of interesting. The, these crowns are, are, are unique. There's one for each armor type. And they give you these special buff gems that you get over and over again that do uh, two different things. And I, I am not up on them entirely, but everybody's going to kind of want these things. And some of the gems are better than others. They're, 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 I sort of see them as a replacement of some of the, some of the tier gear. It sort of gives you something to aim for through mm -hmm. this instance. So they're, they're going to be fun. So keep an eye out for the, the crowns. I didn't realize they, they, they came with something special like that. Uh, I just thought they were just... Oh, I, I just didn't know. Uh, so yeah, um, there's... I was wrong. They they give out, I think it's six six different gems, something along those lines, and they have... Some of the effects are more useful than others, um, hmm. but each gem is random, and they basically give you a... You don't put them in your gear, first of all. That was something our raid had to figure out. <laughs> uh they're just for you and they give you some sort of little buff for for some period of time um is this part of the azurite trait system or no it's just it's just part of this uh this special crown thing um so i just pulled up the list and so like the sunset amber can reduce a party member's size for five minutes on a 30 second cooldown so you can mess with your party members uh the star topaz makes a friendly player sparkle uh with a 30 second cooldown I had uh, and then no there are some idea. Are, yeah, then there are but, some that are useful, like the brilliance uh, can increase uh, stats by four hundred for for one minute. So, yeah, you'll get these get these gems as you pry them out of your crown, so to speak. It creates an item that lasts twenty hours, is not consumed yeah. on use, with the crown itself having a twenty hour cooldown. So roughly, you can play around with one per day. The cooldown yep. is shared among the other crowns you might have, so having multiple doesn't increase the fun. Oh my goodness! Yep. There's a whole bunch of things. I just I wow headed it, and oh my goodness. Yeah, there's I that's. I just pulled that. That is a berm. <laughs> so so some of them are useful, others are not. Uh, others are just fun. Uh, I don't think any of them will make any dramatic effect on your raid. <laughs> so no, please, no, no raid leaders just go out there and be like, everybody go get these crowns. They're, they're just sort of a fun, a fun thing. Well, I mean, this one is they're, like they're a kind of health neat. potion, and this one's a little bit of a speed thing, and this one's a yeah, yeah. and stats by all stats by. This is a mage food. I mean, it's useful, right? But I like this. This is cool. I None of crown. it's. I mean, if you've if you've got a warlock in your group, you know you've got you've got your cookie or whatever. So there's, you know. But they're fun. I think about half of my raid team would would rather make somebody small for for by fifty percent or make somebody sparkle for fifty percent. Like, I think those things are going to be the kind of the fun bits for, <laughs> for folks. Frasley's worried that we're going to make the gnomes smaller. Did you just watch Ant Man, buddy? <laughs> You're going to go to the quantum realm. <laughs> yeah, just just wait until the, until somebody talks about Mechatork for that. Oh, is never he making everybody them. small? Yeah, but that's not that's that's next show. <laughs> that's the next show. That'll be Lonnie. Okay, well let's. Okay, let, I think we have opulenced ourselves into the ground. We have killed opulence. We have looted all the stuff. We have the pretty pretty tiaras, right? Pretty, pretty tiaras. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and now let's move on to boss number five. 
So that's uh, Conclave of the Chosen is uh, is boss number five. And we are going to head up the stairs, uh, kill a whole bunch of trash as we wind our way up to sort of this sacred area for the troll. Um, and this is really where you start. These guys are the gatekeepers for King Rastakhan. They're the they're the sort of the final uh, guardians before you actually get to deal with the king himself. And they are uh, the individual Loa of the trolls. Mm -hmm. um, and these guys have long and storied histories. Because I'm an alliance player and don't play trolls, mm, eh. you, you, you <laughs> but, just looked it up, right? But, but they are long and storied. <laughs> 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 well, L Loa um, are, are are extremely important, obviously, to trolls. They are, and uh, I know that. They're gods. Um, yeah, well, sh sure, yes, okay, and um, I, I recall the trolls calling Wisp uh, Wisps Loa, you know, like the night elf Wisps. Rather than gods, I think probably a better comparison is that they're wildly powerful spirits. Fair, fair enough. That's a that's that's probably a better way to say it. Uh, Barf. That are like deserving um, of reverence, that sort of thing. Yeah, and and they are they are worshipped and and followed by certain aspects, and they and they generally represent different aspects of troll culture, and they are and they are worshipped and, and they give power to certain uh certain trolls in the real world based on their on their power and at this point if you're going in on on normal you're going to see four of four of these guys and you're going to fight a council of the four of them and that's uh paku who is uh a teradax uh loa and he's he's kind of the master of winds and and things like that there's gonk who is a raptor and he is uh, the the Loa of the hunt, and he's you know sort of this lord of of pack fighting. And Kimball, who is a Loa of a Loa of tigers, and then Akunda, who is the Loa of storms. And so each of these, as you might imagine, will play into how the fight works and how the fight breaks down, and the kind of crazy that happens anytime you get a council fight. Um, you you only fight two of these guys at any any at any time. Um, so you start off with Paku and Gonk being active, and and you have to deal with their effects. And then every time you kill one, the other one heals to full, and a new one comes on. So this is one of those areas where you have to say to your DPS, no, no, really, unless you're gaining <laughs> real DPS by hitting them twice, it's really a waste of time. So unless there's somebody that is really gaining uh, by hitting two targets and it's boosting their single target DPS, uh, it's really it, it's really a waste of time because they do heal entirely. We had to do the um, same thing with the Klaxi boss at the end of Siege of Ogremar. It was the same yeah. deal. Same idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Same exactly the same idea. And so it is it is tempting to sort of just tunnel these guys, but then the Loa come into play, and the Loa are what make this fight really interesting. fighting the individual the individual uh, trolls themselves. But as you're fighting them, then their Loa aspect comes into play, and so uh, Paku will bring in a a giant pterodactyl that will uh, appear in the center of the room, take off, and then fly around the room and then wreck havoc on your raid <laughs> and initially he's very easy and you think oh well we'll kill him and then move on but the loa continues throughout the entire right. fight and, and so that's the the trick actually becomes how do i order and how do i time killing these bosses a little bit so that i can line up the the different loa effects a little bit differently because when you kill them actually changes um how the, how their loa present themselves and align align uh, with the other pieces. So you can create some very easy situations or create some very bad situations for yourself. Um, our team, uh, Standard Dragon Protocol, actually we start with Paku, kill Paku first, and then we skip Gonk because his effects really are not that bad. He's a raptor, 
but it's it's relatively straightforward and he doesn't do a lot of damage to the tanks and we skip immediately and go right to Kimball and we kill Kimball next and then come back to Gonk. So that's, that's interesting. I don't I think that's kind kind of against what a lot of the videos and stuff do. Yeah, it's it, it definitely is a lot of the videos sort of say take Paku first and then go to Kimball. Oop, we lost you there go. a little bit there. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I am I back now? You are back. You were saying that the videos say do what? So so the videos uh, take you through uh, Paku and then Gonk and then Kimball and, Gonk, and, yeah. then, and then Agenda is the typical sort of fl norm, what I would call a normal flow that most of the videos talk about. We actually, Kimball does a tremendous amount of damage to your tanks. And so the longer yeah, he, he killed is his up, wife. the... <laughs> did it did it? I don't I, I didn't actually know that uh but his bleed is so painful and it forces a tank swap that you're not allowed to uh that you, and you can't have these guys standing right next to each other so it's really problematic um so we just skipped gonking and killed him because our tanks were able to deal with the damage from gonk even at an elevated state easier than than Kimball oh huh. So, yeah, we we try to do That's things that are thought. That's really okay. Okay, we try uh, so, to do things sorry. that the videos yeah. say, but sometimes the videos they're great for for one thing, but it doesn't work for how your team plays, and so you really yeah. have to kind of adjust on the fly to, to what's causing you problems and fix the problem that's that's affecting your team. I and, kind and of for us kibble is a problem. I kind of want to try that. I'm going to suggest that to the team this Tuesday and see if it changes the way. Because we, we, we beat him. We beat them. But it was like last pull mojo kind of deal where we like finally yeah. got it down at the end of the night. And, I mean, if we can get through it faster, I, the more the better for us. So, uh, yeah. I didn't it even, it didn't even to me occur that would be easier for healers. What's that? It, that would be easier for the healers. Could very well be, yeah. Yeah. And so that – that freed our heal. Basically, what it did was it freed our healers up a little bit, allowed us to actually drop a healer and and bring a healer into a deep back, which allowed us to. So we have one healer that switch switches back and forth between uh, healing and DPS for us. So it gave us more DPS overall because we weren't dealing with that bleed for as long of a period of time. Did we, we actually did the op uh, opposite? <laughs> yeah, we brought in Howland, didn't we? Well, Howland was DPS, and then he switched to heals. Yeah. Ooh, that's Ow. exciting. I want to try that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, take take it for what it's worth. It may or may not work. For, um, but that bleed is really, really nasty on on tanks, especially tanks that are a little bit under geared at the start of a tier. Yeah. Um, and we don't particularly route gear one way or the other. We use a you know everyone's on personal loot these days, but uh, we do a, a sharing system that, that is too complicated to go into here, but we we don't route a ton of gear to our tanks. Um, I often will pass on on gear that's useful to me as a as one of the main tanks that is better for our DPS because often the end bosses have DPS checks, not tank checks. Mm -hmm. um, so early on in a tier, you can be a little under geared and and that can be really challenging to deal with some of those high stats damage things which means that healers are spending a lot of their a lot of their cooldowns on you as a tank so they're not being able to spread that out to the raid when the raid's being chased by raptors or you know dealing with any of these other sorts of things that's interesting because i uh i hear that uh the last fight is a bit of a you know dps check <laughs> the not so much Jaina. The second to last fight is a real DPS check. Uh, uh, Jaina has her uh, moments, but yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone's telling me about how, um, what's that? What's that fight called? Blockade. Not, blockade is yeah. not so hard. It, not it, so it, hard. Uh, give me a call, Sal. I'll give you some tips. <laughs> well, they, they nerfed the heck out of it, though. They they nerfed it and then I heard that they brought it back up a little bit. So, they did. That that is yeah. true. They, they they realized that they they might have done it too much, you know. Yeah. But but they also, you know, the whole race to world first. They um, tuned the uh, 
the, uh, Jaina the other way, Mythic Jaina. Yeah. And and that's why I, it took so long. I I still think personally on on normal and heroic uh, or or at least on normal because that's where we are right now. Uh, uh -huh. Jaina is is easier than than uh, Siege. Oh, that's a popular opinion. And yeah. uh, if you look, would look at like rate WoW progress and things like that, like in in the first week, uh, you had all these people like like how many times like each boss had been killed and Jaina had been killed way more often than the blockade because yeah. people were just using each other's lockouts and stuff. Uh, we, yeah, we, we had a three hour raid last night and, and it's our Sunday, our standard Sunday night raid. And we spent probably two thirds of it on, um, on blockade, which was our, which was sort of our progression boss for that night. Totally. And then we went in and we're like, well, let's spend the last third on Jaina. And we can't, we, we got Jaina to like 6% before she teleported. So we were it like, it's, it's, it's a much easier fight once you start to kind of figure it out. I've heard that story just everywhere. Yeah. Just everywhere. But you know what fight we're not talking about tonight? We're not talking about Either Jaina. one of those. We're talking about blockade. <laughs> so we were, we were just thought... talking about the conclave. I'd and, like to point out that you started it, Sal. <laughs> you know, it was my fault. And uh, Lonnie will be here next week, and we will go over that. And I'm sure she'll give us all the tea. Uh, but so uh, what's going on with uh, boss number six? Next. Six. <laughs> six. Uh, so King Rastakan. So after you defeat the, the Lotus the and, God. And, and you move on, uh -huh. you enter sort of the... I guess uh, the the penultimate reason why the alliance is is here. This is this is the the end of the alliance raid, is is King Rastakhan. And so our goal as sort of the alliance was to come in here and drive a wedge between the horde and the Zandalari trolls, and to get King Rastakhan to surrender and and back down. That's that's our goal when we first come into the into the something into tells me that's gonna backfire. It, it kind of does. <laughs> you trying to Just say that the horde isn't the surrender in type? <laughs> well, uh, Rastakhan certainly is not, and he has made a deal, and it, it's it's a deal that is unknown to. Uh, the horde and unknown, uh, even his daughter, even which we'll get daughter. into here in a minute. Yeah, so uh, he's made a deal with the Loa of Death on Samdi, uh, and who plays a very active role in the fight. And so, instead of surrendering, uh, King Rastakhan feels like we probably shouldn't be in his throne room, and he would like us to leave. <laughs> And so he and some of his guards decide that they're going to attempt to uh, force us out. We get into a bit of a tussle in his throne room, and <laughs> Docker, we we accidentally, instead of capturing him, put him down and kill him. <laughs> uh, which which triggers a number of really, really, really bad things. Um, so... Bomsamdi, the Loa of Death, incredibly powerful Loa. We we don't kill him. He runs away. Uh, spoilers if you haven't gotten there yet. I apologize. <laughs> Late spoilers. Um, but when the king dies, the curse of Bomsamdi is transferred down his generational line to his daughter. Um, and so we go in. We fight him. We'll talk a little bit about the mechanics of the fight and how you, how you fight him in, in a second. But you fight him, you end up defeating him, and you leave his body as you flee from the Horde army returning uh, returning to the city for his daughter to find him lying in his last gasp of breath, his last um, last moments of life, where you see the power then shift from him to her and Bomsamdi come in and even she doesn't know about the deal so now she has this uh, power and she right. is angry, angry, angry with us and unfortunately it looks like 
we instead of having the the goal of of breaking the horde apart and and saving you know and splitting up this we we have actually driven them together by killing her father so shocker really bad idea <clears throat> and when you need to plan better <laughs> killing someone's family not the way to go you should have learned this mansion <laughs> Even when we win, we lose. You got to be kidding me, man. Yeah. So, so the that that's sort of. I mean, we win, and and we leave, and you know, some folks are happy. Gen Greymane is happy, and and you know, we've dealt the mysterious blow. Kind of, but I I really think it's gonna it's gonna blow up in our face here in a little bit. But uh, King Rastakhan is a is a really neat fight. It's a it's an yeah. interesting fight. Um, because of the, it, it's kind of a, a multi-phase fight, and I would almost call it a, it, it's sort of an intro phase, a first phase, and then there's sort of a split phase, and then the raid comes back together again. Um, and so you fight, you fight the, uh, the, the boss initially, he doesn't take any damage, but he will share damage with a couple of ads. A lot of the videos have said, uh, to pull him away. We don't do that. We keep him right in the middle, uh, stacked with his ads because it splashes damage and does damage to the other ads. Mm. Um, the biggest challenge with that is just to make sure that you don't stand in his uh, his frog frog puddles. Um, so just move him a little bit, take a couple of steps. All your melee will be able to dodge them, but just by stepping behind. Um, so keep everybody right in melee and just nuke everybody down. Super easy. And then phase two starts, and that's when Bunsamdi comes out. Bunsamdi has the aura that is challenging uh, because it starts to stack and will kill you. So you do have to pull Bunsamdi away, and there's a little bit of a tank swap rotation that goes on back and forth to avoid and, and to clear stacks and all of those things. But the real true transition happens when you bring King Rastakhan down to 60%. Well, Somdi will take half your raid down into the death realm. Um, into, into the what? Into the death realm. He's the Loa of death. Death, yeah. And so they'll go, they'll go into this sort of other area to fight Bun Somdi himself while everybody else gets to stay up and keep dealing with some more ads and dealing with Rastakhan. It is, uh, it, it's challenging, um, but um, it, it's challenging to deal with with that split if you're not careful but if you watch the progression bar you can really stack it and this is an area where you want your on mobile dps so sal you want to stay up so you move to one side of the room and you have all of your other melee dps closer to bump somebody because he's going to take the the half of the raid that's closer so we divide our raid right in half and then we we pull them pull them that that other separate way another really a little neat trick if you have a priest in your raid who has life grip yank your tank out of the the other tank out of the way so that you don't accidentally have a tank go down there's no tank necessary so we send two healers down with all all of most of our melee dps and we pop hero in the lower realm for those people it doesn't affect anybody up top and we just burn him down because as soon as he reaches 50 percent, he runs away everybody comes up and then we pop hero again for everybody else who's left over. and then we just finish off the ads finish off uh, the king, and away you go. So pretty neat fight, but the, the trick there really just keep keep Rastakhan in the in the group for the first part. It'll speed up your kill. And then stack the stack the advantage for the the phase two where the ads are separate where your, your rate is separate. Sal you look like you want to ask a question. <laughs> I mean th this uh, again isn't not necessarily what everyone's doing. Yeah, it's not what everyone's doing. Sorry, That's... I yawned. I... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's not. It's not what everyone's doing. Uh, a lot of people. Right. A lot of the videos will say to pull to pull um, Rastakhan out in that first phase. Yeah. The reason is is that he's got an explosion on, that that happens on the tank that's tanking him. Um, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but there's a beam. There's a cast time. That guy mm -hmm. can run out that sort of thing. Um, if if you're doing it right, it, it really doesn't take that long. And so 
if you have a high mobility tank like paladins are, are are great for this warriors are great demon hunters are great right just just have them run out i i jump on my horse my indoor horse as everyone calls it sprint away from the boss i go explode away from the raid and then i come right back it's a by keeping him in we measurably increase the damage that we're doing to the ads because every point of damage that goes on him goes to the other ads. So all the cleave damage that we're doing is basically mirroring back to the other sure. ads. Sure. So if you can get away with it, and if you're if you have a tank that that can run away and not explode on the raid group, it's a it's a it's a good damage increasing strategy. awesome that's 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 super interesting uh, that's, that's why you had me on right to give you tips that you hadn't thought of <laughs> uh no i hadn't thought of <laughs> thought thought about that at all um <laughs> wow and it, it, it for all intents and purposes this is uh you know what we came to do as an alliance people it and is. the uh the rest of the raid is us um uh we're not actually there for the rest ourselves. of the raid, right? <laughs> yeah, right. so 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 the end of that, after you kill Rastakhan, there's actually a series of cutscenes and then you you move and you actually leave. So you get on a griffin and boat and you you the rest of the story is actually told from the horde perspective. I'm sorry. What did you say? You said you you could get on a griffin and what? And fly away. Ah. Okay. So you, you actually fly out of the city. And go land on one of your ships in the in the uh, in the harbor, and the rest of the point is told is told from the horde perspective of chasing us down. Now, I don't want to impinge on anyone's uh, anybody else's stuff, but I do have one one more really great tip. Okay. If you if you wear your guild, uh, um, tabard. Oh, what's it tabard. called? Tabard. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. If you wear your guild tabard, you can see it through the horde makeup. So you may look like a blood elf, but we're alliance inside, and it shows through. <laughs> so so throw on that that guild tabard and and rock the alliance spirit in in horde. We have we 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 took pictures like this. <laughs> so well, it alliance like for life. <laughs> Will it work with like a Stormwind tabard? I I imagine it would. <laughs> I imagine it would. We 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 just had the uh, the the convert to raid guild tabard on, so that one that one I can assure you works. <laughs> well, I I'm mo I'm mogged into the um seventh legion right now. I I, I have a total like a uh, silver and blue mog. Bar nice. feet tomorrow. Well, the yeah. the the mog that they transfer you in is is definitely horde centric when you when you convert over. But, oh, they uh, give you yeah, a new mog and everything. I worked hard on mine. Um, a new mog and everything. Yeah, you're you're completely all red and spiky, and but you can still rock that alliance tavern. <laughs> I don't. I you. cannot wait to tweet the screenshots. You know, I don't see people doing this that often, but I still totally use the in-game tweet function. Me too. I absolutely oh, yeah. use it. Yeah, like when we're supposed to be raiding, I just start taking photos and tweeting. Sometimes I wonder what my raiders are doing, so I'm going to have to start checking that out to see see if they're doing that now. <laughs> Dude, yeah, you got to follow them all on Twitter. On Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the three bosses that you laid out for us today... Um, last time we talked about the first three and the horde does, um, the paladin and then they do the gorilla and then they do the monk and the mage, but we do it in a That's different right. order. Um, That's correct. the second three ser sets of bosses, is it horde and alliance players play the same series of bosses? Yeah. So, so they're actually playing as us. Yeah. So when, when they do it, they convert into alliance players and do them exactly in the same order probably wearing blue transmog and blue and gold um and so yeah the the horde are, are literally playing as as they work through these these sets of bosses so they're seeing this part of the story through the alliance's eyes just like we're seeing the defense and our escape through the horde's eyes in the next right. set of bosses okay cool same same, same. it's 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 you know I will say though, 
from a from the perspective this is the first time they've ever done anything like this in a raid this is really blizzard really stepping out of kind of their comfort element in terms of storytelling and and how do we tell this very dynamic story in a in a in kind of an interesting way and show it from both perspectives uh i i can't say right now whether it's successful the raids are good it's it's fun to play yeah but you know and and, and the community as a whole will 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 give their opinion at the end of the day but i applaud blizzard for really stepping out of their sort of standard routine with rating and say listen we're going to do something different here and i i think it's it's other than having to wear horde gear and be a blood elf which i'm you know <laughs> i really like it too um i from the beginning of the expansion they really tried to do this thing where like oh the horde this and the alliance that and oh shades of gray but then the way they the way they showed us that was the teldrassil thing and i like mm-hmm. i don't i don't know that there was really like you can ask the horde players and they'll tell you something different probably but i would say that there really wasn't a whole lot of shades of gray to it even having played both versions of that event this feels better this feels feels like oh okay so we're playing as the alliance characters who experience this and then we're playing the horde characters who experience this like it just it feels like the same thing that they tried to do but it feels like a better implementation of it well and they've done this they've tried to do some every once in a while we come back war between the alliance and the horde in different expansions throughout time in in previous ones even the rating has been consistent all the way like you didn't have a very different experience if you were primarily a raider the stories were always told in the quests or outside the raids and all of those things there was never anything that really tied well into the rating that that represented the back and forth of the horde versus alliance and so this is really interesting that they've actually tried to tell that story in this in the raid which I for, a lot of people like this game for lots of different reasons, and I will never say that any of them are right or wrong. But the way I experience this game is through the rating. And so, if you're going to tell me stories and you're going to tell and have me engage with with this kind of thing, you have to bring it into the uh, into the dungeons and into the raids. And this is really the first time that they've done that, and and I applaud them for it. I think it's 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 a good attempt regardless of of how it ends up being judged by history time i totally agree me too jay uh we really can't thank you enough for being on the show with us tonight for hanging out with us um we've really never done boss breakdowns like this before um and you and and, and also euro before you made this so so easy and i think really entertaining so thank you so much for coming out uh before you leave you have anything to pimp? Where can the people find you? Share with us your secrets. Uh, well, thank you very much. It was a tremendous amount of fun to come on and to talk to you guys and, and to break this down. This is this is what raid raiders and raid leaders are really passionate about. I'm super happy to uh, have had the opportunity to share this with you. Um, I'm I'm here pimping standard dragon protocol, our raid team uh we are a heroic uh ahead of the curve team we work really really super hard and we are as you might imagine looking for new members so oh. if you're a member of the of the uh convert uh convert to raid guild if you're not a member and just a fan and want to come over and join convert to raid uh we are we are looking to add a couple one or two we don't recruit a lot because we don't have a lot of turnover but we are looking to add a couple of uh of range dps to our roster get us up into that 18 19 20 sort of size and uh, we're looking for things like mages and hunters and and all of those wonderful wonderful people that can do mechanics and and want to ha- come in with a great attitude and and have success because that's that's what we do year in and year out. We we succeed, we set goals, and we achieve them. And so we we really love it. And if you see uh, see anybody around, don't hesitate to give us a shout out or or say hi to us in uh, in uh, in guild and around on Discord. We we're, we we may be somewhat quiet and understated, but we we love being part of the community. 
I, when you said you wanted, you were looking for a couple. I was like, oh, you just want married people. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's funny to mention that. No, that's not a. Re- you have a tremendous people are uh, uh, who have just gravitated to us that play with their couple uh, mm-hmm. with their significant others. Uh, we have husbands and wives. We have boyfriends, girlfriends, and we uh, we have. Uh, you know, a father, a father and son pair that used to raid with us quite a bit. Uh, the son's not as around as much uh, anymore, but uh, we figure that some of the best people to deal with some of the stresses with raiding are actually people who know and care about each other. And so we we really like that that aspect of of bringing people together that that know and and care about each other, and we really do treat it like a like a team team aspect and try to be really respectful of everybody else so yeah if you're a couple that plays a, a mage and a and a hunter or a, a mage and an elemental shaman yeah, come <laughs> talk to us you can you can find me on discord i'm i'm around in the in the uh, ctr discord that's probably the best place to find me and uh and other than that uh you know i'm on on twitter which i look at once every three months at uh j falcon 1387 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, Jay. Charts is not here. Okay. But we always give someone these days anyway with with charts here. We give people a a quiz. Oh jeez, a quiz. Um, <laughs> there's and we generally generally we ask for, like raid leaders to um, name everyone on their team. But the thing is, that's not why you were on. You weren't necessarily on to pimp standard dragon protocol. <laughs> Uh, you were here to do, to do something else about a raid team, so um, we're gonna ask you something else. Uh, um, so can't can't you ask me for my raid team members? I uh, no, you've been with them too long. <laughs> you've been with them too long, and that would just be too easy. Okay, now I'm gonna give you the name of the raid, and I oh, want gosh. you to give me the. I am terrible. And <laughs> the terrible. end boss, like the, the end boss of the raid. Oh, Sal, no. I have seen so many. I don't even remember. <laughs> you okay, came here let's... to talk about bosses. So we're talking about bosses. <laughs> okay. First oh, wow. Is a gimme. Okay. okay. Molten core. Oh God! Uh, big giant fire mental guy that smashes you with a hammer. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Well, I mean, we've killed this boss on two different. Yeah, I'll give you an easier dozens one. Firelands. Dozens of times. Yeah, oh. yeah, Firelands. <laughs> no, guys, I, I I mean this sincerely. I am terrible with boss names. Uh, I don't remember any of them after i'm done with them i move on <laughs> okay well let's let's and you were playing in vanilla right you were we, we know you were I, I was playing in vanilla i was raiding in bc um the 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 top boss i got to back in the day was gruel okay so i just <laughs> took away the uh other vanilla ones so uh <laughs> Kar- Kar- Oh wait a minute! Stop. Molten Core is Ragnaros. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah of course, of course. Uh, Karazan. Uh, it's so that it's God. He's the big demon. <sighs> uh, <laughs> well, it's him remember, and the I legions don't he name, commands. But he's, a, he's a big demon, and, and and so the raid strategy with him is you actually stand <laughs> in the corner, like there's a little gap in the wall that the tank actually backs into. And so when you tank him, it you uh, he's a prince of some kind, if I remember correctly, but I, I could not pull his name out. You're right. He's a, he's a prince. Uh, Barf, do you know how to say that? Um, yeah, Malchazar. Malchazar. Uh, that, there yes, you go. Malchazar. Malchazar. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gruul's lair. Well, Gruul. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Which was neat because so Gruul's Lair was an interesting an interesting boss fight because if you ever looked up for Gruul, you'd see a whole bunch of dragons impaled on his uh, on his in his lair. Yes. So if you haven't been in there, really really interesting. <laughs> so I've done the fights. I just don't know the names. <laughs> okay. How about Magtheridon's Lair? Well, that's Magtheridon. 
Okay, that's you know, <laughs> when our names are in the. When... <laughs> okay. Serpentine, serpent shrine. <laughs> Serpentshire and caverns. I can't say it because there's all these dungeons there and there's a raid there too. I, I, I never did this dungeon. It was a 25 man only dungeon at the time, but there was a giant naga at the end of it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, Lady she's a big Bash. old naga. There you go. Lady Bash. Okay, she's. I, I've, I'm going to do very badly at this. <laughs> uh, there's only a few more. Um, she, she's basically, she was, uh, is she definitely, definitely dead? She's I, definitely, I mean, definitely dead. She was a big, big, big deal in Warcraft 3's expansion. She hung out with Kelthos and Illidan a bunch. Yeah. And there is an entire um, a zone in Cataclysm named after her. Yes. Where you get to um, ride your seahorse. The only place that you get to ride your seahorse. Yeah, the only place you get to ride or seahorse. Um, the battle for Mount Hyjal. Oh. Um, another giant uh, demon with big old wings. and But I'm not going to get his name. I'm really not. <laughs> I, I, mean, never, I never there. did Hyjal. I never did um, Hyjal again. A 25-man raid that early on. Well, I'll give you an easier uh, one. Arkham Hellfire Lord. Citadel in uh, Warlords of Draenor. Well, that was uh, that was Garrosh at the end. Was that the no, Garrosh that was Siege one? in Missa Pandaria. Siege of Ogrimmar? Hellfire Citadel. Yeah, I'm... Either I... way, it's the same answer. No idea. <laughs> um, no Ar idea. Arch Archimond. Okay, Black Temple. Again, never did Black Temple because I wasn't rating 25 back in the day. But it's Illidan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just I was just playing you on that one. <laughs> that's okay. that's it. That's Illidan. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 I, I got one more for you. Um. Now, the Ice Crown Citadel. <laughs> I know that one. No. No. <laughs> No, Sunwell. Uh, that was Ke it was not Kale Floss Sunstrider. I actually deleted that one. That was in um. That was the eye. Uh, the eye. What was that eye? Yeah. But I mean, we've had Archimon twice. We've had Illidan. We've had Magtheridon. <laughs> yeah. This one, uh, Sorry, Sun Sunwell was killed, Jaden. Oh, so we're all go. talking about, you know, a bunch of demons and stuff. Anyway, that, that was a pretty interesting quiz, uh, Terard. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy for that one. Yeah, it was a good one. We should do that more often. So, so I'm a very forward-looking person. <laughs> Is okay. what that, that should tell you. Who's the Who's the next raid uh, boss after Jaina? Jaina is the the end as far as she's it. She's the penultimate. She's the raid boss. Next year. Who's not, who's after who's after this? Oh. I don't even know what the next raid is at CG. this point. We're still I, I we're just starting this tier. I'm I'm very focused right now on, on this tier right now. We've got a lot we just started and we've got a lot to do in this tier. So we're we're spending our time focused on uh this is my Bill Belichick answer. <laughs> we're we're focused on what we have to do next. <laughs> Which is which is heroic rating. <laughs> I, I I happen to notice uh, that there's another uh, raid in uh, Raid Finder, like just like listed there. Um, oh, is there? But like not one that will. Uh -oh. Oh. Wait a minute. I, I like I like Frasley's answer in the uh, in the uh, the raid to reclaim Nomergon. Why has that not happened yet? Yeah, Mechagon uh, and uh, underwater above water place hasn't happened yet. <laughs> we don't need any more water zones. Let, let's it was let's, such a... let's take back. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Barf. No, I'm just upset with Sal because she doesn't like the best zones. What were you saying? <laughs> I was gonna say we should definitely take uh, take back Nomergon at some point. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's right down the street from a major alliance military force. We should have had it back years ago. Well, I mean, Absolutely. it is radiated now. So, so if I had to guess, uh, you know, we're we're probably going to be facing uh, ends off at some point. I don't know whether that will be, um, or or whether there will be one more after that. But that's that's probably where we're going. We're probably going old gods uh, after after this tier somewhere somewhere soon. Shara. Um, you know, and and it, you know what? It, it may even be the next expansion that we get to to end off. We we may be dealing with some of the entry into into that into that Nazoth. Next tier. So Nazoth. Yeah. yeah, is that what I did? I say the wrong one. To end off. No, 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 no. You pronounced it wrong. Oh, okay. It's, it's like mm, fashionic. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. But we, we may be. We may be dealing with Lady uh, Lady Ashara or something like that as as the the penultimate boss, or she may be a lead up. We'll, we'll see, something like that. <laughs> okay, Barf. <laughs> Get him you guys out of got here. me. Congratulations. I was I was <laughs> prepped for the raid. I was prepped for the raid team list. You guys got me though. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hey, thanks so much. Uh, it was uh, really lovely to, to to hear from you and. Uh, I, even better to have you on. So don't be a stranger. I, I, I'm here any any time. Feel free. Uh, anytime you need somebody to come, I'm happy to come join you. It's it's, it's a fa always a fantastic time. And let's not let's let's not let it be three years again. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Bye everybody. Thanks. So much, Thanks. See ya. So I'm gonna ring. That was fun. I'm gonna ring Ash real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, while you're ringing Esh, our our really good friend Turarts did give me some information that we're supposed to read on the air. Um, something about Valentine's. Oh, that's right. Uh, Turarts is going to be doing a Valentine's stream, uh, which sounds cool. But the thing is, uh, she's going to be doing some raiding. I don't know if that was. She didn't say if it was LFR or it was going to be normal. She, I, I, I think, I... at one point said that it would be a normal run. Oh. That it would be an okay. LOL, raffle stomp, let's get in there and die type event. Should be no a lot of fun. No is going to raffle stomp anything at this point in the tier. But, uh, heck, why not? Let's do it. I'm there. Uh, it, it'll be Thursday on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So that's rad. Echelon, Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Got an Atari t-shirt on. Atari, indeed. Bam! Bam! Nailed Good it. Good deal. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. What you got for us today? Well, I got a little bit of a Ray report for you, and uh, and we got some hot Twitter mana buns on deck. <laughs> on deck. On deck. Or on the cooling rack. Those are hot <laughs> out of the oven, so... Yeah, so um, let's uh, let's start with the uh, with the raid report. HTX oh. is uh, four of nine killing opulence. Rubber chickens, glutton for punishment, are uh, six, uh, five of nine killing conclave, That's and right. uh, raid six. TLDR just pull have King Rastakhan down on normal difficulty. Epic Eggplants, Threat Level Midnight, Banana Republic, Salad Senate, Resolve, Hump Day Heroes, and the Gruels Gone Wild all took out or, you know, defeated, let's say defeated Mechatork. <laughs> uh, uh, Fallen Knights and Troublemakers are both up to Conclave on normal difficulty, but uh, went in on Heroic and knocked out Champion. And uh, Hell to Pay. Nine to Midnight and Bacon and Kegs up to Mechatork, also heading into Heroic, knocking out Champion. And uh, we've got several folks killing her, well, not killing, but let's say defeating the Lady yeah. Jaina uh, on normal difficulty, Dark One's Own Luck, Hydro Volunteer Fire Department, and uh, Project Fail Sauce. Uh, keep going, it's fine. Edamame Enterprise all killed Jaina on normal difficulty, and I'll tell you, all these people also killed Blockade. So it's like you kill Blockade, and then then Jaina just dies apparently. 
Um, <laughs> that's that is what well we, we were just discussing. Yes. You know what's funny though? Uh, Face pull killed blockade, but Lady Jane is not dead yet. I was watching them last night. I was kind of mm -hmm. peeking over the shoulder, you know, and uh, the, lady, the Lady Jane is still stands. She, you know. How many pulls did they have on them. Jaina? Uh, nine, maybe. Oh, okay. That that surprises me. Uh, yeah. Just so many people are. You they know, were close. Watching. They were like they were like at eight percent or something, but. Hmm. Okay. But didn't happen. So, into heroic, uh, we've got uh, Hydro Volunteer Fire Department uh, took out the Jade Fire Masters. Project Fail Sauce is uh, up to Grong and took him out working on Opulence now. Uh, Face Pull has killed Opulence. Casually Elite has killed Opulence along with Keep Going, It's Fine. All of those folks are four of nine in heroic difficulty. And Edamame uh, Enterprise has killed King Rastakhan on heroic difficulty. Also taking out Champion on Mythic. And Rectified is. Uh, let's see, seven of nine having taken out Mechatork or knocking him out, defeating him. I don't know how to say this, you know, when you don't kill the guy. But so, uh, so Mechatork is down for rectified on heroic difficulty and champion as well on mythic. Wow, guys, that's wow. awesome. We yeah, it's a lot. A lot. So uh, just this uh, seems in the past two weeks, you know, it's 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 a little over 200 progression kills for all the teams across uh, all the difficulties. Uh, uh, Echelon, I, I, I didn't, you, you didn't expect to, to be asked this question, but um, I, I understand that uh, the, the website isn't working so well. Uh, for this, so how are you getting all the all these kills? So the uh, the website's got some, you know, it's the t basically the website's the website that that tells me the progression that teams are making is right. working just fine. Uh -huh. It's just that the the website that it pulls the rosters from the team rosters sure. is not is not working so fine. The uh, teams are not able to update the rosters. So uh, in Discord. There is a channel that the community has, uh, by popular demand, um, cr created or, or thought and willed into being. There's a channel for progression updates. Uh, mm -hmm. If your team is not being reported uh, in the conventional fashion, then, um, then uh, get on Discord and, and put your progression update in there. I think you have to have team leader status on your uh, your discord uh, account sure. uh, you know to to be able to post in that channel so just check with me or or hashtag uh, or any of the officers really should be able to get you that if if you don't have it if you don't have the team leader uh, uh, role I guess is is the correct way of discord language get that team leader role and you can post your your progression there if it's not updating on the website if it's updating on the uh ctr uh app spot it's app spot .ctr -progress com something like that yeah. if if you're updating there just and and everything looks correct then pff, you know you don't have to worry about it it's i'm gonna get it if it's on there i'm gonna i'm always gonna get it but if you've had roster turnover then it's a problem if you and you know people you know a lot of teams i would say um today's update with the teams giving me you know manually giving me the the uh progression news um uh -huh. i don't know probably 20 percent, 25 percent of what you heard today was not the automated version so uh there's a few teams that apparently have seen enough turnover it's just not working and it could be that your roster is very large. You know, some teams, they, they come in to uh, a particular raid tier. They put 30 people on the roster because, hey, everybody's really excited. You got 30 people mm -hmm. on the roster. And once you're 10, 15 weeks into an expansion, you've only got 18 people, really, that are sticking around. And it's not enough. You know, your roster is still 30 people. And you only got, you know, a small fraction of that that are still getting 
those kills. And so since you can't trim your roster down because the website for that is not working so great, then that's kind of what happens. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I was I was worried about this segment <laughs> when we found out the uh, uh, website where not everything wasn't you know uh, t totally working but looks like people are reporting it and that makes me so happy because i really want us to represent our guild absolutely and also uh, jay falcon in chat just says pester your raid leaders to do something for once and uh <laughs> i meant to actually i meant to uh update standard dragon protocol because you know, they're in the category of they're, you know, not getting updates automatically. So I like ping J Falcon while he was on the show. I was like, hey, don't don't respond until you're done, but tell me where you're at because <laughs> I didn't have I didn't have their progression updated. But they are eight of nine normal. So uh those guys are working on Jaina, it would seem. Uh Jaina he says Jaina was at six percent, so pretty darn close to having Jaina run away, little girl run away. So <laughs> uh, I want. I kind of want nothing to do with that fight. Like, w about w with the last two fights at all. You know, I want blockade. Just sounds so freaking hard to me. And it's it, and we have three fights this tier that split the raid. And to, to me, you know, it's it's like okay, is this the theme of the tier? You know, splitting into two groups and, you know. It, it, well, I. Everyone tells me that the blockade is all about personal responsibility, and like one person can like w wipe the, the the entire raid. Well, I mean, I don't know. That'll it, be a progression I feel like for sure. I feel like Blizzard. I feel like the Blizzard devs, the raid, the raid devs. You know, the people who make these encounters, they got a little checklist for every raid tier, and on the raid mm -hmm. tier is the personal responsibility fight. <laughs> okay, there, you know, like there has to be at least one strong personal responsibility fight, and I'm thinking of in Tuma Sargeras the maiden fight. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay, the, the maiden balls, fight. Balls, man. The balls, just, man. Just, you know just, that fight was so much easier with with 15 people than with 25, or you know, the fewer people you had, the better. Right, because you if it was you, always the same people screwing we had that mechanic. fight down. We had that fight down, but if twenty five people showed up, we were screwed. We were totally screwed. Twenty five people showed up, real excited about a raid night. It's like, hey guys, um, how about we just like set ten people because we'll kill it in one go. But you put twenty five people in there and forget about it. One person makes a teeny tiny mistake and everybody's dead. I wonder what it's like to solo just... it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sure paladins are doing that, right? Paladins, demon hunters, death and knights, death yeah. Knights. That, death those, knight. those are the ones who, yeah, yeah, yeah they sell, they probably solo on it now. It's <laughs> probably the easiest fight to solo. Think about. It. I mean, you're the one person. Ah. Well, uh, did, uh, you were also looking at uh, Twitter for us today. That's right. I got I got some so apparently. There was this, there's a tweet requesting, you know, uh, guild memories, you know, from, uh, from the converted, uh, Turrets Twitter did account. That, yeah. <laughs> cool. And so there were, there were several replies, nice. some nice memories. Um, one of them I had to censor, uh, otherwise, you know, mostly, uh, family friendly. Um, and I'll, I'll, uh, read some of these off to you. Uh, Grave says, Best memory was my was the day I got invited. How welcoming chat was, and I was being invited to come do things with people within an hour. Uh, coming oh. from a dead guild, I was overjoyed by the sense of community from the very start. Um, that's that's one of I think that I think a lot of people have that sort of memory of of coming into the guild as well. That's that's. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I reminisce automatically just reading that. But uh, Tink says um, Tink remembers when Belschnickel tried to crowd surf uh, Devlin and and uh, Carmen at at uh, my first BlizzCon. Uh, Tink says, and it went all kinds of awkward wrongness. And the speech given under the stairwell by the man, the myth, the legend. Blank the Horde. Blank the Horde. 
Kinsman. That's Kinsman. right. I That's right. I uh, witnessed both those things. Um, Bell Schnickel. Uh, you know, a, 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 apparently grown men shouldn't crowd surf. Yo. Especially right, when not, you're j jumping into a. If there's not a mosh pit. If there's not a mosh pit that's so tight, that's sar sardine tight, you're you're. Just forget about it. Spanks replies to that tweet with a, uh, "Hey, I can't remember. Was that before or after the belly shots?" That was know. before Probably. the belly shots. And BlizzCon has gotten. And I don't tame. even want to know what happened after the belly. <laughs> <laughs> That was the BlizzCon before I went to my first BlizzCon. I'm very sad that I missed that BlizzCon because I hear about that BlizzCon more than any other BlizzCon. Dude, that was one night. There was one night. It was totally in public. It was uh, someone was passing around bottles of whiskey and someone people got on tables and then, then, uh, then suddenly there were belly buttons full of alcohol being passed around. Things happen in in the in the hotel lounge, in the hotel bar. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, that was uh, that was you know, that that that's not the situation anymore. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen that. So maybe this year we'll bring it so, back. Uh, yeah, you know, they've tried to bring it back. You know, every year I'm there, they try to bring it back, and. It's just you know i don't know there's some kind of magical thing that just happens once in a lifetime and it's okay it's okay you know, cherish it cherish those memories can't happen twice that's that's not a you, you, you can't like redo that kinsman maybe anyway. not but too much alcohol so, uh, every year Kobe <laughs> john kenobi aka catfish johnny on twitter says his favorite memory is when tamman said his name i don't know why he it's his memory he's allowed to have he's allowed to cherish it we like tamman uh, i'm sure there's a story behind that you might need to get catfish johnny on the show so he can talk about it but tamman ctr said his name and navok shared a memory of sal inviting him to the converted round table on google hangouts this is kind of a long one. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he tweets a picture. You can check it out on Navox's Twitter, I'm sure. And you can see how Sal explains to him in great detail how Google Hangouts work. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun if you read that. Okay, Sal's going for it. I'm going to, while Sal's looking that up, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that Nate, uh, we all know Nate. Nate used to do the raid report. Nate has a favorite memory. Uh, or many favorite memories. He want, he reminisces about all the quiet moments uh, where he's gotten to get to know the people in the guild, have a quiet meal at BlizzCon with friends, chatting after raids, and talking on Twitters. Uh, talking on the Twitters. So those moments are the best. So Nate enjoys those personal connection moments with the guild, and I do as well. I appreciate that. I got a picture of Nate right here. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Looking for it. I can't. No, it's a, it's above. You can't really see it, but it's there. It's right there. Um. So. Wonderful. Are you, are you reading Avox? No, I'm. I'm looking. Look like it. you were going for it. Oh, okay. Mega Code says for me. It was being one of the first 12 to form the guild and watch it grow for years to come. The first weeks were absolutely crazy with all the invites. And now just look at it. An organized mega guild with solid officers and all. So mega code has that unique perspective of seeing it go from, from teeny tiny to incredibly, incredibly big. Dr. Pope's best memory yeah. is being the cause for so many system malfunctions during the early years. That's totally true. Every time we had Dr. Pope on, it would just like uh, technical, everything would melt. Just melt. I got hit one here from Lord Xanthius. Uh, this might be my, this, my, this is one of my favorites. It may not be my favorite, but this is one of my favorites. He says, he says his first raid night 
with the CTR team, Banana Republic, is his favorite memory because he was super nervous, trying to calm himself down, thinking, it's just normal before you've done LFR. It's okay. Just do mechanics. And then the first thing he heard in mumble was, don't forget to set it to heroic. So, yeah. That's a... That's a you know, you ever been if raiding for the, you know, with a new group for the first time? You're like, huh, oh, what do I do? What do I do now? Yeah. And then his second favorite memory is the 200 man pound fist run, which I missed that. I was online that day and I missed that run. I remember it. Oh, missed it. Yeah, we were all <laughs> up and down Gorgon that day, I think. And my last one is from Frasley. Frasley at Frasley Tastic on Twitter says, I truly will say it is the day that I watched Morgan BM Hunter, our friend, get the CTR tag during a group howl with the Morgan's Owl. That was my first personal interaction with CTR, and it was one of the factors of why I joined later. So seeing seeing our Silver Bolt get her CTR tag was was a, a great memory for her little Frasley. So. That's all I've got. Lots of the good this, memories. Um, what does that mean? CTR tag added during a group howl. I don't understand that. A group howl is an event that Worgen's Howl puts on, but I don't actually follow their show very closely, so I couldn't tell you more specifics than that. Guild tag. I'm sure Frasley knows. Well, the way I took it was that... Uh, they were doing the show. There was an event on the show, and and uh, Silverbolt got her CTR invite while they were doing the show, and she probably made a thing of it right there on the show. That's the way I took it. I don't know. Fred, oh, that makes sense. Case, correct me. Yeah. Oh, that would make sense. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Presley's confirmed. confirming. Confirmed. Okay. <laughs> um. So typically at this point in the show, we do our own shout outs and then we book it. Um. We can do shout-outs like normally, or if you guys have a memory that you'd like to share, that's cool, too. Uh, Sal, what do you got? Um, maybe my favorite memory is... Um, uh, but, I mean, not my favorite, but the, but the one that's like stuck out in my mind. You know how you, you just remember where you were when you hear th about things? or It's, it's usually it's about something bad that happens. Um, well, I remember exactly where I was... I, uh, the, the road that I was on, exactly where I was going, I was stopped at a stoplight, two hands on the wheel, listening to a podcast with my phone like this, like kind of in my sh shirt I do like that, that move. so I can hear it. That's a good move. Yeah. <laughs> bra straps really help with this. I should start wearing a bra. Like, definitely. So I'm listening to this uh, Convert to Raid podcast and uh, – they announced that there was going to be a uh, a guild, and I was going to Chase Bank to do drop off a check or something, and I went right home and got on Airy Peak, like immediately. Um, that's it, it, do not stop, do not <laughs> uh, pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars straight to CTR. I remember exactly where I was. I was on Pleasant Run in uh DeSoto going to the Chase Bank. Yeah. So that's just just something that really sticks out in my mind. Yeah. How about you, Barf? Uh mine, I mean I obviously I feel like this is a this was one that you guys were gonna be able to call coming in. I met my lovely oh. and wonderful <laughs> girlfriend thanks to the guild and this show specifically. So that's that's gotta be it, right? How about you, Ash? What do you got? Uh, so many good memories. Um, the early, the early, my early time in CTR was also uh, when uh, my wife and I were first getting together and getting to know each other. And so that stands out in my mind as, you know, uh, new, you know, new beginnings, a lot of new beginnings, you know, with, uh, you know, getting married and all that. And we both we met in the game. She'll talk to you about that tomorrow. I think she brought that up earlier today. I don't want to steal any thunder, but we met in the game. We ended up, you know, uh, we got married and we 
wanted to get you know back into the game you know because it's real busy around marriage you know wedding time and all that and you know moving and all those things so we wanted to get back into the game when things got settled down and a friend of ours was like hey you know you should get in with this ctr thing you know they put a guild together and the guild got kind of put together because we both listened to ct you know the convert to ray podcast uh, previously, but when we were going through the whole getting married and moving and all that, you know, we kind of stopped listening to stuff. We were out of the loop for a little while, and our friend, we were like getting back in. Our friend's like, hey, you should check out this guilt thing, because they put this guilt together on Airy Peak, and that was like, so, you know, everything was new, and the guild was new, and we made a raid group immediately. Like, we got into CTR, we made a raid group, we got on the forums, and I remember making a post on the forums, like, we're going to lead our own team, you know, and uh, making that post in the forums and getting recruits and having that first raid with like 13 people or something. Um, that was awesome. All of that was, all of that was really, really good. So that's what I think about new beginnings. Think about, you know, new beginnings and fun times and getting hitched. <laughs> Before we bounce, I do want to read these. They came in in, in chat because I don't know that we actually actively asked for chat room shout outs, but we did get a couple. Um, Winchester had a shout out uh, to Kaya and Sal for always being amazing ladies and so helpful to everyone. Loved both of you. Um, let's see here. Uh, and then Jay Falcon says, besides BlizzCon, one of my best guild memories is Standard Dragon Protocol getting help uh, from the LOS gaming guys to create the Star Augur videos. Oh, getting to help the LOS gaming guys. That makes more sense. Um, what a neat opportunity that came up from just as a function of being in the guild. And then there was another one from Winchester that said, my best guild memory happened last year when Casey and Kara asked me to come raid with the rubber chickens one night. I remember that. That was at the beginning of um, the one that Star Augur is in. The one that starts with the lobster. Night, night, night hold? Night hold. Um, uh, asked me to come raid with the rubber chickens one night, and I had never been asked to go until then, and then I got to become a regular member of the chickens. Thanks so much for the amazing time that I have had since then. You are very welcome, dude. Anytime. Anybody have anything else before we're going to bounce? Oh, I think we've been at it for a while. Yeah, we're a little... A show. We're a slightly little bit over time. So that's going to wrap us up for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank Navox and Geek Chic Lisa for the theme music. I'm pretty sure I said it right. Geek Chic Lisa. I think I may have said Lisa. Geek. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at converted underscore CTR. Tur Arts is at Tur Arts. Sal is at summer underscore Sal. Esh is at Echelon. And I am at a bonus level. Uh, Sal, when's the next episode? The next show is Monday, February 25th. That's in two weeks. Now, raid leader Lonnie... What? Echelon's weeks. trying to tell me something. Two weeks. Two, I'm just saying. Oh, two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we are an every other week podcast. <laughs> and and uh, Echelon will be especially excited, excited because he uh, his, his better half will be joining us to talk about the last three bosses of Zara Lore, uh, th thus rounding out, ending our uh, four episode series on the new raid we've never done anything like this before and I'm, I've, I've quite liked it I had fun it's a good show yeah. so far well so uh, well we got one more coming at you uh, on February 25th I've learned a lot and I can't wait for the last one so I can like actually know the whole raid <laughs> it's gonna be good <laughs> we're gonna say bye now everybody for Tur Arts it's time for tea for Echelon <laughs> for Sal. All your loot is belong to me. And for myself. We'll see you next time, everybody. You can follow the show on Twitter at converted underscore CTR. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Converted Podcast. And find us on our Twitch channel, Converted Podcast. And join us live every other Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. This podcast is a part of the Signals Media All-Star Network. For more information on this and other fine shows, go to SignalsMedia.com.
It's okay to stick our stuff in your ears. Really? Camera won't focus. The camera's you focused on me. You fig like Jaina? If I get really close to the camera, it'll focus <laughs> on me. There we go. All right, now it's in focus. I like okay, it. Who's the raccoon? Not, this is not Jaina. This is this is Silver Sweet. Okay, which is my youngest daughter's character, the wizard. Mm. And she she specifically said her cat was golden. She has a familiar. It has to be a golden cat made of gold, okay? And then this is uh this is this is called uh Lily Lightfoot. She's a little halfling and she cheats cuz she uses bigger swords than she's supposed to. <laughs> called cheater. And uh, and then this is this is Ara the druid. Oh, gotta get closer. You can't see it so good. Oh well, the face is actually really really cool and detailed. But you know, I made these for for my daughters because I was painting miniatures and I thought it would be really cool to make little miniatures for them. So we'll see. They haven't seen them yet. Oh, they'll get. They haven't seen them. In, I sent pictures to my oldest daughter because she draws she's like i want to draw them i want to draw the characters so i'm always super impressed by people who can paint miniatures and stuff because i can't paint or draw anything and anytime anyone does anything even moderately artistic is like mind-blowing to me and then you're going to do it on a small scale and make them like all nice and detailed and everything that's just it's extraordinary i, I don't know how people do it it's 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 a horrible horrible thing to get into um this one, the Aura slowly. one, it it was like nine hours of painting over the yeah. course of like three or four days. Like I was painting in the after, in the evening after I got home from work, and I paint a little bit and paint a little bit, and yeah, it was like probably nine hours of painting. When know? are we all gonna play together? Um, and I got this, I got this headlamp thing with the with the magnifying glasses and everything. Yeah, I did that because my eyes were getting tired for one. Trying to focus on something up close for a long time. When are we all going to play? I'm ready. I got my, I'm DMing my that, own. That stressed out look on Sal's face. God, the last time... I have oh, three man. games going. Oh, how am I going to yeah, do that's, another one? That is a lot, man. Yeah. That's a lot. It's just... I mean, I love it, but like... um. Well, you know, finish a campaign, and then you know when when you're when you're available, you know, we'll figure something out sometime. Figure something out. Do a one shot or something. Yeah. Yeah. Do a one shot. Draven do a had one shot. Idea. We'll do. We'll we'll have somebody dream up some Jaina encounter for us, and we'll do a one shot. Right. We'll save Jaina. That'll be that'll be the campaign goal. We'll I mean, that's from those nasty whores. I can dig it. Draven had what this idea. D&D does. You just make stuff up, and then you put their rules into your game. And you just oh, yeah. You just it just, it every time I, I try to do a one-shot, everyone's just weird, and it, it ends up, like, taking five hours. So it's like, really, what I got to do is just drop them in somewhere and just drop a boss on them. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> you know? And there's no RP. We're doing one this coming Friday. That is the third episode of the one shot that Draven planned for us that was supposed to be a murder hobo campaign against zombies. So we're six hours into that one. He also had this idea for a heist that was like all rogues. So I started in, I started figuring out what rogues look like. And then I realized that I just wanted to play Lupin the third, the uh, like 1970s era anime character. So I rolled Lupin the third. <laughs> Okay, I uh, um, was yawning, so I think it's time to go to sleep. Yeah, I'm very much falling asleep myself. Yeah. Same. Hey, chat room, you're the you're the best. Chat room's on it. Love you, chat room. Yeah. I'm gonna go to sleep now. Good night. Bye. Good night, chat room. Good night, guys. <laughs>